Welcome to the Open Forum. Once again, we have the grand privilege of looking together into the Word of God to discover truth. And there's no other place in the whole world that has as important truth as the Bible. It contains information about thousands of subjects that uh, the world uh, can't possibly get into at all uh, because they don't understand that anything at all about how God, the infinite God, relates to this world and to you and to me. And God has given us the Bible. Yes, us. That's not them over there. That's He has given the Bible to you and to me that we might ha understand something more about what God wants us to know about. But we have to come to the Bible very humbly and pray constantly for wisdom from Him. But this is your program. We want to... Uh, help in study in understanding the Bible so as you ask a question about a, this verse or that we'll look at it together and see if we can't learn something more it has to our answers have to come from the Bible and not from our church creeds uh, they're all different from each other and we, which one are we going to follow but we know the Bible is the same I don't care what language it's in it, the Bible is the Bible and every word in the original language it came from the lips of almighty God himself so shall we take our first call this evening on and uh, find out what this individual's question might be welcome to open forum how are you brother Campy very well thank you yeah, I want you to compare two scriptures. The first one's Genesis 19. Genesis 19, 15, verse 15. 15, and then verse 23 and 24. Okay, Genesis 19, verse 23. Verse 15. Verse, verse 19, 15, uh, excuse 15, me, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest they be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And then verse 23 and 24, The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord Jehovah reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from Jehovah out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and uh, that which grew upon the ground. Now, what is your question? And if you'd read Ephesians 4, verse 26. Ephesians 4, verse 26. Ephesians 4, verse 26. There we read... Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, what is your question? Okay, uh, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. That word wrath, when you compare scripture with scripture, uh, has to do with judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed during the day. Um, is there a sin to have judgment during uh, the evening when the sun goes down? Um, most of the plagues with... Um, Pharaoh in Egypt took place during the day. So the question is, would Judgment Day actually start at dusk, uh, dawn, and sunrise? I, I'm sorry, I, I I I don't quite follow you. This this uh, Ephesians five, uh, from Ephesians four, is simply saying. Uh, that uh, anger is a very, very costly thing, and you're not to, uh, you're not to continue in anger. Uh, if you find yourself angry in this day, don't wait till tomorrow to get it straightened out, because anger is is a very serious offense, and uh, I, uh, it's uh, 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 our wrath is not is just anger is, uh, and we in our pride and we can uh, feel hurt or we can feel like we have been uh, 
misunderstood or something and and we don't have patience and so we can become angry and it's a very very serious matter uh, I in my own personal life have found I I can't afford to ever be angry because I always find that you, you lose control of yourself a little tiny bit and you say things that you shouldn't say or you think things that are not altogether God glorifying and there's nothing good about anger but thank you but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum yes brother Campion. i just wanted to say that everybody should be vigil and we should be waiting for jesus and that's what we should be doing and learning the word of god and thank you for your work uh, what is your question? Uh, my question is on marriage. Um, uh, if you're married and um, you get a divorce and you marry somebody else, um, that's not permissible? Well, if you yeah, that's sin, of course. If you marry, are married, and marry someone else while your former spouse is still living, the Bible warns that you should not do that. And that's just for another big sin on top of millions or thousands of other sins that all of us are, are, could become or could be found guilty of. We <laughs> we find that. It's very easy to fall into sin, and little sins are just as serious as big sins. But now, what is your question? Well, that was that was it. You know, um, uh, it, so it's not good to marry another person that's been married. Well, it's uh, it it's not uh, if your former spouse is not li st still li living, you are not to marry again if you are, want to follow the law of God. Of course, if you do marry again, uh, and, and yeah, sometime along you do become saved, all of that sin has been covered by the blood of Christ. But if it is, it, it's just a, another big fat sin right on top of all the other sins that we can so easily get involved in. And remember, it says in James chapter 2, verse 10, if we break the smallest commandment, it's like we have broken the whole law of God. So uh, we had any kind of sin brings us under the wrath of God unless God has already made payment for those sins. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good morning, Mr. Compton. I have a question for you. I heard you say many times that God is the one that choose the one that who's going to be saved. Why do some religions believe that you cannot be saved unless you belong to that particular organization? Why do some religions believe you can't be saved unless you are part of that religion? Well, you see, the problem is that God has given us the Bible and it's read in uh, many, many different denominations and congregations. And, uh, but, but unfortunately, un too frequently, very much too frequently, those who are reading or studying or trying to come to understanding of the Bible do not follow the biblical rules. Uh, the first rule that is super important is to recognize the Bible, every word in the original language, came from the mouth of God. Uh, and that makes everything super serious, and we tremble before the Word of God. And that already is hardly ever obeyed. Secondly, uh, we are to... Uh, instructed in the Bible to compare Scripture with Scripture and not to uh, arrive at a con uh, at a conclusion or an understanding of a verse until we've checked all through the Bible any other verses that might relate to the same subject material to make sure we have harmony all through the Bible <clears throat> and that is a uh, takes a lot of time and a lot of study. Uh, and uh, that is not done either. And so conclusions are readily developed that are not based on the whole Bible. Thirdly, 
uh, the Bible teaches that God has to open our spiritual eyes. In other words, if we're going to be a student of the Bible, we must be engaging in prayer, 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 constantly asking the Lord for wisdom because we're not going to find good answers by our own wisdom. But, uh, and so by the time you violate these laws, it's very, very hard to find those who really have, have come to truth. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yeah, hi, Mr. Capping. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um... I'm a little confused about this progressive earthquake that may might happen that way. Uh, what I was wondering is, is uh, all the believers are supposed to be resurrected at the same time on that day, or is it going to be? Are they going to be resurrected as the graves open up in each uh, time zone? The Bible, well, you know, a little at a time. You see, the Bible doesn't really tell us that it, everybody will be resurrected at the same moment. Now, we have taught that in the past again and again because that seemed to be the way it would be. There would be one huge earthquake all over the world at one moment, and, uh, and then uh, that would mean that all the, uh, the rapture would be uh, instantaneous all over the world at the same moment. But as we continue, and this is the nature of the Bible, as we continue to study, 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 we are finding verses that we have not answers to. Like, for example, in, in uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 25, it talks about the, uh, the wrath of going from one nation to another nation. When we look at Revelation 18, we uh, read about all the merchants and the business people and, and the church people standing afar off and, and weeping and wailing because they see the city, the cities of the world begin to come under the wrath of God. We've never found a good, good answers to these and, and other verses of a similar nature. But uh, when the idea was brought forth by one of our listeners, as, as a matter of fact, that maybe it would start uh, in one place and then over a period of 24 hours uh, follow the sun, around, the sun around the world, it began as, as, and that introduced a lot of complexity, believe you me. But on the other hand, it also... Uh, uh, begins to give answers to some of these passages that otherwise we cannot understand. And so uh, uh, while we don't want to be a absolute about this, nevertheless, there's a very high probability that this is the way it will go. Those of us that live on the uh, west coast, the Pacific timeline, It'll actually be uh, midnight between Friday, May 20th, and Saturday, May 21st. Well, yes, but we will not be experiencing Judgment Day yet. We will not experience Judgment Day, according to what we're finding. No, no city in the whole world will experience Judgment unless it has come to May 21 in their city, May 21, that, has, that doesn't change at all. And probably about 6 in the evening, or more or less, uh, 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 in the evening, and, uh, and uh, it, that, that it begins to look like it will uh, answer m most of the questions about this. Living on May 20th that hasn't experienced it yet, but it started say in New Zealand, is there still time for salvation? No, not at all. Not at no. all. Look, look at so the... Once it starts, that's it. That's the end well, of the Once God. Judgment Day. Now, the day, it's Judgment Day, and a day is 24 hours, and, and it, uh, throughout that day, hour by hour, it'll be progressing, if we're correct on this, 
And there's a high probability this is the way it'll go. It'll be progressing hour by hour all around the world. But it is the day of judgment. And, and it's a very interesting thing. It helps us to understand the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25 in a way that we've never understood it. Namely, the fact that the bridegroom has come and five of the virgins uh, do not have oil in their lamps. And so they, are, they quickly start trying to find oil. And uh, by, while they're looking, uh, the bridegroom comes to where they are and uh, the door is shut and they're left outside. And that reminds us that would fit perfectly into the idea that people uh, suddenly are totally aware that judgment day has come. They're, they're hearing uh, the uh, terrible things that are going on on the other side of the world. And, uh, and quickly they're going to be praying, Oh, God have mercy, God have mercy, God have mercy. Can I still come in? And they're like the ten, five foolish virgins. They're looking for it. But it is too late. They, God has been warning now for months. And we still have a, a, a several weeks that he is warning. And if, if once the judgment day is coming, once we know they, everybody knows it is here, it is too late. I'm, I, according to what we read by, in the parable of the ten virgins. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, good evening, Brother Tampi. Yes. Uh, I was listening to your uh, radio station, and I heard you say that the truth comes from the Bible, correct? Uh, uh, you heard me say that... The truth comes from the Bible. That the truth is from the Bible, yes, because God is the very essence of truth. Uh, the, we, we can exaggerate, we can uh, uh, say ha uh, statements that are only half true, but with God, uh, He is the. Remember, the Bible says, Christ said, I, and He is the eternal God, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that Amen. emphasizes that. Amen. So, with that said, and I think God, you brought that up. Because I had a question on a verse. I don't need you to read it for me, but I will do so for you. Can I read it now? Can I read a verse? What verse? Well, I will read it for you so that uh, everyone no, will can... clearly understand it. What verse is it? Okay. It is Matthew 24. Matthew 24, yes. 36. Verse 30, 42. Matthew 24, verse 36 to 40. No, well, we don't. Well, let's let's take a look. Matthew 24, verse 36. There we read. There we read. Matthew 24. Verse 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no one, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But now, what is your question? My question is, I have heard, and I have seen, uh, actually saw a billboard this morning, you gave a specific date for judgment day. 
So I don't understand it. I, I do, just as you said it yourself, the truth comes from the Bible. So if the Bible states this, that no one knows the coming of Jesus, yeah, excuse me, excuse me. The problem is, you are, uh, you are do, t uh, saying exactly what the Bible indicates is a sign that we are right at the end. There will be many who are, think they are true believers and who are saying, no, Christ is going to come as a thief in the night we can't know, and then sudden destruction will come upon them. That's one of the signs that we find that again and again, especially amongst people who are members of congregations, that this is the way it is. And so I'm not surprised when I get these kind of calls. But the fact is that God has a lot more information. And we, uh, you notice even in this passage it says we should be watching. And the Bible tells us that if we watch, then we will not be surprised. As a, by a, as a thief in the night. Uh, and the Bible insists that we are to uh, watch. And where do we watch? We watch in the Bible. We search the Bible, comparing Scripture with Scripture. And uh, but, but what you are saying is it fits perfectly. It's one of the signs that we are right near the end because you are, are joining with millions of other people who are saying the same thing. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Howard Campion? I'm very well, thank you. What is your question? My question is, um, I was, um, it was about marriage. Uh, my, I was married before. But before I married the young lady that I married, she was married before me. But I had a conversation with her. She said that she never, she just married the gentleman for money. She didn't marry him for love or anything like that. Now, now that I'm remarried, I'm wondering how do I stand with God because I feel convicted. Well, the, the, you know, marriage, regardless, uh, people get married for a whole lot of different reasons. Some because they're infatuated with that person. Some because that person has a lot of money. Some because that person is uh, very beautiful and so on. There are many, many different reasons. But the fact is, the marriage institution that God had developed in the Bible, beginning with Adam and Eve, he, uh, we see the first marriage there as God introduces Eve to, to uh, Adam. And Adam says, this is now bone of bone, my bone and flesh of my flesh. The two have become one. And once you're married, regardless of why you are married, uh, no ma that doesn't enter into the equation. You are married. And then it's your business to love your wife as Christ loved the church. That is, you don't love her because she's beautiful or is a nice cook or a bed, nice bed partner or a lot of money. You love her because she is your wife. And, uh, and anything... Uh, and you, you, and once you're married, you're never to uh, seek a divorce. You are to uh, remain married. And if you, if if the if your spouse divorces you, then you are to remain single until uh, she dies uh, or he dies, because uh, you're not to marry. Uh, uh, the, the wife is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. We read in First Corinthians seven. Verse 39. So, in other words, the first marriage that she married, even though she married him for money, if, if the marriage wasn't consummated, then it's not really a marriage in God's eyes, right? Well, now, the, once you get a marriage in our country, it, the law is very in different countries. In our country, if you get a marriage license, if a person gets a marriage license and someone licensed to marry pronounces and uh, uh, and now I, I may, I, uh, you are now man and wife. Whether you ever went to bed together or not makes no difference. You are married. You are married in the eyes of the law of your country. And, uh, and so, but now the issue t today is, the big issue is, how do I stand when Christ comes in another seven weeks? Am I, am I, uh, 
am I a child of God so that I will be raptured or am I under the judgment of God and and I have a you every one of us have a far bigger problem than marriage right now we have a big problem am I ready to meet Christ and if I'm not then I and it's still the day of salvation I can still cry for his mercy and maybe 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 that God in his mercy might still save me and that's that ought to really be the number one business of our of, of our thinking because our judgment day is absolutely very very close and very very final there's no changes once judgment day come God has spelled it all out but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum <coughs> yes brother camping um my comment or question is you know I I I, I am very uh, trusting of your teaching of the Bible but the thing that worry me a little bit is when you start out making a statement with the words like the fact is and then, um, just like you were doing tonight, you you turn around and say something like, "We were teaching uh, that the true believers will be taken up at one time," and now you're saying, "Oh, we've learned something new." Now, my question is: This is the part that worry me about this end time teaching um i mean well no excuse is it possible me. you might find something tomorrow that will change your teaching today about the, the total end time um Ex teaching excuse me may 21 god has given us so many proofs and so many signs that that is absolutely going to happen that god has brought us to that information that with great with great emphasis that it's going to happen and even that came over years of very very careful study hold on i'll be right back with you we're talking to a caller about this very serious question you must remember that I am not the authority. I am not the authority. I am simply a teacher of the Word of God. And I, and God has to continually open my eyes. And, and I keep learning. I listen to uh, opinions and uh, or ideas from others. And, so, and it makes no difference how young or old or how deep they are in the word of God they may say something that that helps to further understand the word of God and uh, and but when it comes to the matter of May 21 God has g given us so much information so many proofs that identify very li literally with the May 21 that there's no possibility it will not happen However, when it comes to some details of how all of this is going to happen, we're still, we can, we're still open to what the Word teaches. But please, don't trust me. Please, trust the Bible. Uh, uh, we are, we are uh, trying to show where these things come from and check them out in the Word of God and, and, uh, and pray for wisdom and pray that the Lord might open your spiritual eyes and uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this is the way we, uh, it should be done uh, there, there is no human authority only the bible is the authority and so i don't hesitate at all to say i used to say this and now i say something a little different but it, you'll never hear me say that about may 21 may 21 is locked in in so many ways and there are so many signs that God has uh, uh, given in the Word of God to show us that we're there 
uh, that is going to happen in May 21 uh, uh, that uh, I would be absolutely in rebellion against God if I would say it was anything but absolutely going to happen but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum um, Brother Camping, uh, could you uh, read chapter 14 of Zechariah, verses 1 through 5, please? Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 1 through 5. Let's take a look at it. Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 1 to 5. Behold, the day of Jehovah cometh, and... Uh, Thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee, for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall Jehovah go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before uh, Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the uh, east and toward the west, and there shall be a great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like a, ye fled before, from before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah. And Jehovah my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Now, what is your question? Um, could I just read verse 6? I was going to ask you that too, but I just read it now, and so I left it out. But it's, on that day there will be no light, no cold or frost. It will be a unique day without daytime or nighttime, a day known to the Lord. When evening comes, there will be uh, there will be light. But uh, anyway, you know, it, he's also in these chapters talking about uh, the horses and the rider both going blind. But do you, do you think that's already happened, or do you think we're waiting for this one? And it, it could be very close, I think, maybe. I, I'm sorry, are you... A, 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 what is your question? He talks about horses going blind. What uh, verse is that? What verse is that? Well, no, I was just asking, can you think of any other time in history uh, that would describe this situation in chapter 14? Oh, no, this chapter 14 is talking about this day of judgment that is so close to us. And it is, uh, although it is already, uh, it is already, uh, as it's talking about the division of the, of the city that, uh, that, uh, uh, and that's been happening right through the Great Tribulation. You know, there's been the whole Great Tribulation that began in 1988 and is to extend right up until May 21, a full, and an an actually a, a full 23 years, 8,400 days. And it is a time of separation. God is separating the wheat from the tares. God is separating the goats from the sheep, uh, to use the figure of uh, Matthew 25. Uh, and uh, this is what is we see here, that, uh, there, uh, that Jerusalem is being separated. Half is uh, uh, are cut off and go into captivity, and half are not cut off from the city. Uh, this is talking about our days. Uh, in very, very difficult uh, language of parable language, but nevertheless, that's the whole sense of this passage. That this time, when when God is dividing uh, and the true believers, that those who are the elect of God and will be eternally with Him, from those who look like they have been true believers who are convinced they are true believers, and yet he has sent, he has sent test after test after test. And by these tests, he is separating the wheat from the tares. It talks about the rider and the horses going blind at the same time, but I'm just saying, does that sound like judgment of God or, or judge? Or, you know, I'm sorry, where does, it, where does it say the horse is going blind? I, I missed that. 
What does it say about that? It says, uh, Away go sword against my shepherd, against the man who is close to me, declares the Lord Almighty. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little ones uh, in the whole land, declares the Lord. Two -thirds I'm sorry, what verse are you reading? In chapter 13, verse 7. Uh, 14, verse 7? No, 13, 7. It's just a little back. Oh, no. You're looking at a different passage now. We were well, reading from uh, Zechariah 14. And, uh, and uh, we're not going to try to get into understanding all of Zechariah right now. It's far, far too complex. And uh, uh, that's, a, that's another subject altogether. So let's, uh, in fairness to all of our other listeners, and we're... Uh, this is a very difficult passage at best anyway, but I can tell you that it is certainly talking about the uh, period of the Great Tribulation and ending with Judgment Day. That, that much I can, I, we, we can be sure of that. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. The number to call is 1-800-322-5385. 1-800-322-5385. And shall we take our next call? Uh, good evening, Mr. Camping. Yes, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Uh, I have a question about Ezekiel uh, chapter 13. Uh, verses uh, 16 through 21. Let's look at that. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 16 through 21. Yes. We read, The prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord Jehovah. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them, and say, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Woe to those that sow pillars, pillows to all armholes, and make her chiefs upon the head of every stature of to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying in my, in my uh, people that hear your lies and so on. Now, this is a passage, incidentally, I'm not qualified to uh, get into I I I have, have not had uh, I've not learned yet how, how to understand these uh, pillows and and uh, and until I understand that I don't really like to talk about it because I might I, I'll be uh, I'll be uh, guessing and that's not worth anything and I'd appreciate it if we if we wouldn't try to sol uh, solve what all this is talking about but thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Oh, uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, I have Luke 18 through 20 in front of me right now. Luke 18. Let's turn to Luke 18. And which verses? 18, uh, Luke 11. I'm sorry. Luke 11, 18. Luke 11, verse 18. There we read Luke 11, verse 18. If Satan uh, also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is upon you. Now what is your question? Well, I just wanted to focus on the idea of miracles, of uh, the idea that the Holy Spirit um, is able to 
be powerful in the world. And this uh, is a principle held by a lot of different ministries and, and denominations of Christianity. Um, and I know your take on it is that uh, uh, more conservative, you don't believe in in the, uh, a lot of what the, you the see the Pentecostal type things. This yeah. this is talking about about uh, casting out devils, and uh, frankly, uh, uh, God has not given that power to anyone in our days. It was true that when God was writing the Bible, uh, He used that as as a picture of what salvation is that Satan is cast out. But in our day, uh, uh, God, there's nothing in the Bible that tells us that we have that power today. In fact, how do you, how can you cast out a devil? How do you know someone has a devil? I, 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 the, Satan is very, very deceptive. Remember, he comes as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. So how can you tell? And if just because of someone having some seizures of some kind, they, a lot of people thought that that had to do with evil spirits. Well, and actually, it, 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 they uh, are not evil spirit activities. They're, uh, they simply have problems, uh, uh, medical problems of one kind or another. But it's interesting that those churches that are particularly under the power of Satan, where they are believing in signs and wonders and dreams and and that God is still speaking today, they are real busy casting out devils. Well, but they are, they're, how, do, how, do, how do they know that they're casting out a devil? It is all, it is, uh, they, they, are, they are simply doing what they think they want to do or should be able to do. But uh, the fact is, uh, they themselves are in, 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 in under the power of Satan because they are, are adding to the word of God and, and are under the wrath of God yet but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum uh, Mr. Karam yes go ahead with your call welcome to open forum hello yes yes okay can you hear me yes very well Oh, great. Mr. Camping, what, what the uh, person said who called you a while ago, he said that, um, that you sort of say the fact is, the fact is. Now, what he meant is when you say that, that me leaves no room for error, and you used to say that the Lord lifts the humble and he abates the uh, proud. That sounds like a very proud statement when you say the fact of the matter is. Well, I'm sorry that you don't like that, but you know the Bible is a whole series of facts. The Bible is not just uh, imagination or theories. It is a, a whole statement of fact. When we talk about God uh, as being uh, eternal, uh, that is a fact. When we talk about Christ coming again, that is a fact. Now it doesn't mean that uh, you know, it's 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 like when we're we when people discover or uh, come up with any new teaching, uh, uh, it can be something they've invented or whatever, and uh, it's based on they believe that what they have developed is is a fact uh, because it's beginning to show as that it's going to work. But then they find that they have to make correction as they go along and it's the same way we very humbly come to the Bible ready to admit yes there was a time when I said that as a fact and now I know it was incorrect because God in his mercy opened my spiritual eyes but just because I said it was a fact that didn't make it the, the, that it was absolutely true until when we get to May 21 we find that God has given us so many proofs and so many signs that not only do we say it is a fact but it is a fact that is absolutely going to happen we make a, a far 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 stronger statement 
than just the uh, statement that it is a fact. When we say that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that is a fact. When we say that he demonstrated uh, how he pay made payment for our sins by hanging on the cross, that is a fact. We don't, we don't have to pussyfoot around and set, make it less than that because the Bible teaches those things. Okay, my question was, and this is my, that was just a comment. My question is a quick one. If May 21st comes, when it comes, and I believe you're 100% correct, you're, you're not saying we for sure are going to get a progressing earthquake. It, it could not hit, I mean, all at once. Exactly. I'm saying that there is a high probability, but I am not saying it will happen by progressive earthquakes. But there, but there's more and more evidence in the Bible that this could happen. And yet, I, you'll notice that I'm very carefully couching my statements by saying there is a high probability because it does help us to solve a lot of questions about verses that heretofore we could not really understand. Like even the parable of the ten virgins, now that parable uh, comes a lot clearer to us if indeed this is the way it's going to be. But thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Brother Camping. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, I have just a comment, and then I have a verse from Ezekiel that I need you to read. Um, I just wanted to thank the... I just wanted to thank the Lord for Family Radio. I've been listening to you since I was a young girl. I'm now in my uh, late 40s, and you have been a tremendous blessing to me. And so I'm just... Praise God for all of His goodness, and I'm very thankful. Um, the verses that I want to read are Ezekiel 12, 21... Ezekiel 12, verse 21. You, uh, you wanted to ask a question about that? Yeah, and then verse 21 through 28. Well, let's see what it's Ezekiel 12, verse 21. We read verse Ezekiel 12, verse 21. And the word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord Jehovah, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision, for there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I saw Jehovah, I will speak, for, excuse me, for I am Jehovah, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For, you're in your, for in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it, saith the Lord Jehovah. Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord Jehovah. Now, what is your question? I'm just wondering if this applies to our time. Oh, it absolutely does apply to our time. We're living in a, in a time when God is giving his final understanding. Remember, there was a lot of information that was given to Daniel, and then he was commanded to seal it up. And then when we looked at Revelation 5, that book that was sealed with seven seals over, uh, was gradually, the seals were taken off until we got to Revelation 8, verse 1, and, uh, and learned that uh, 
that the, uh, the, the book had been opened up at the beginning of the Great Tribulation. And we uh, began to learn that the tribulation was to be 23 years and so on. And so there's all kinds of information. It, it almost sounds like we have a different Bible and a lot of pastors, for example, they hear what we're teaching and they've never done any homework and understanding that, uh, that what we're talking about, that, uh, the book being sealed, uh, that had been given to Daniel and that it was finally opened up. They've never learned anything about that. And so they think we're coming with some kind of a crazy gospel. Uh, we're not coming for, with the Bible. And, uh, and so I just feel sorry for them. I wish they would I uh, start at, at the beginning and, and, and uh, look at these things and, and uh, begin to check these things out. And, but anyway, uh, that is what's happening today, that God is giving us the final information. And so, of course, that forces us to say again and again, in the past, I was wrong because it was based on an incomplete Bible. We don't have the complete Bible until God opens our eyes to what he had hidden in it uh, uh, that had been already given to Daniel. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Brother Camping. Yes. Um, a few callers back, you were you mentioned uh, Jeremiah verse... Uh, chapter 25 verse 32 could we compare that with jeremiah 23 19 and 20 well let's look let's see jeremiah chapter 25 verse 20 verse did i did you say jeremiah uh, chapter 25 verse 32 yes sir Yes, thus saith Jehovah of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And in Jeremiah 23, verse 19 and 20, we read, uh, uh, Behold, a whirlwind of Jehovah is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of Jehovah shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. And that's where we are right now. We're in the latter days. Now, what is your question? Um, I'm wondering about the whirlwind. Um, is, is that also a literal reference like the earthquake in um, Revelation? I don't know that uh, that whirlwind uh, again is. Uh, uh, I I haven't done my homework on that. I'm sorry. I I I can't really. Uh, I, I don't dare to speak about what this whirlwind is. It's the it's certainly the whirlwind of God's judgment. Uh, that is, uh, and that is. It gives the impression of it going, moving, moving. A whirlwind moves. It doesn't. It's like a. Tr it's like a, a great uh, typhoon or a great uh, hurricane. It's moving across the ocean and hit, getting ready to hit uh, the land. And, uh, and uh, then it goes on and goes further, uh, deeper into the land or up the coast of where, wherever it is. And wherever it moves, it, there is tremendous destruction. And again, at least, at least we can say it, it certainly is not contrary uh, or it's not uh, it's not suggesting something uh, uh, that is different than what this p p high possibility is that that uh, that the uh, judgment of God will go from city to city and cover the whole world in the space of 24 hours it it's uh, it, it sounds like it could be very well uh, it could very well fit into that arrangement all right, well, thank you very much. Have a good evening, Brother Campy. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. 
Good evening, Brother Kathleen. Yeah. Um, I've been a pretty good listener to your station for quite a while, and I'm just totally confused, and I'm hoping you can answer this for me simply. Um, I've been hearing you teach that should we leave this earth as a non-believer and, and when Jesus does return and the graves are open and the bodies are cast upon the ground, um, that there's no hell, per se, uh, that, that I've been taught as a young kid all the way up through adulthood. But now you're saying that we're just laying out on the ground and to be put to shame. What is shame? I, I guess I don't understand what shame is in the eyes of God. Well, let me, let me uh, give you a human illustration. You know, when a very, very wicked person is executed for all of his crimes, uh, the government that executed him normally tries very hard that once that person is physically dead, not to desecrate his body at all, because his body belongs to him. And, oh, hold on, hold on, I'll be right back with you. We're talking about shame, uh, and here is the highest de essence of shame. We read in Galatians chapter 3, where God says, uh, in verse 13, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Now, to be cursed means to be utterly rejected by God, as if we are the lowest of the lowest. That's the highest degree of shame. And when Christ was hanging on the cross demonstrating how he suffered in paying for our sins, he was enduring that shame. Uh, and the Bible also indicated that shame is, in, is, is put on people when they are, uh, they are stripped of their clothes and, they, and, they're, and they're naked in the eyes of all the people looking at it. And there's also the shame, as we were talking about it, of the body that is desecrated after, after it is dead. Uh, that body uh, still belongs to a human being who was created in the image of God and to, and to desecrate it, leave it up for, to the wild animals to eat or to let, the, let, let it rot there and, and with the maggots crawling in and out and, and so on is, 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 it's just shaming that person, even though that person is not alive, even though that person is, uh, is, uh, doesn't feel that at all. And it's, but it's nevertheless his body, and, and it's being treated this way after he no longer has any conscious existence at all. And, uh, and you see, on the one hand, it is an enormous shame when we sin. It's like, it's like a, a family, a, a fine, upstanding family, and then they have a son who they call a black sheep. That is, he's just negative. He is, uh, he is shaming the good name of the parents and of their, of their family. He's doing terrible things and, and causing a lot of uh, uh, people to look at that family with disgust that this is happening, he is, it is all, sh he's shaming. Now, this is what we do when we sin. We shame God. He has given us these wonderful laws in order that we might enjoy life to the highest possible degree. And every time we commit a sin, we are shaming God. We are, uh, we are, we're, we're created in the image of God. And so God is saying, all right. There, but there's also going to come a time when you will shame, be shamed in my eyes and in the eyes of all that I want to, to see you. And that is that even after you're dead, your bodies will be desecrated and uh, in the worst way as a shame and, uh, and, and as a curse to show that you are indeed cursed of God. You are utterly... the looked upon by God as the lowest of the lowest, and so on. And that's all has to do with shame. It's a, it's, it's a very big subject, a, a very big deal, because it is desecrating a body that was created in the image of God. It's dead, and it, it, it doesn't realize that he's 
being shamed, I, I don't see the punishment, I, I guess is what I'm saying. I, I mean, what's the punishment if you're dead and you're not realizing you're being shamed? But the fact is, we already sense that in our, just in our, in, a, in human life. I, if, if someone is uh, executed, no matter how wicked they've been, uh, the great care, if it's a, a normal situation, great care is, is, is given that that body will not be maligned in any way. And even though that person is dead and won't know that it's happened, it is a revolting, a very revolting thing in the eyes of everybody else. Uh, uh, and that's just the nature of, of what shame is. And, uh, uh, and so it is a very real part also of the punishment of the unsaved. But the, but, you know, the, the, the actual finality of it is expressed in in the simple statement, the wages of sin is death. And once we're dead, we have no more conscious existence of these other things. That's God's uh, good pleasure that he, uh, that he uh, desires that those bodies be shamed. And that's because God has been shamed in the first place by them. And it is all... Uh, uh, and God is God. And uh, he... Oh, my. When we... When we sin against him, when his laws are there for our good, and we deliberately uh, uh, rebel against him, that's the worst kind of a thing we could ever, ever do. And yet we do it. And that's, that's why that shame also comes along. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Oh, good evening, Brother Harold. I just wanted to make a few comments and then ask you a question. First of all, the caller that called the other night in regard to the billboards with your picture on them, that was very mean. And regardless of how he, uh, what he believes, if he's listening right now, that was really rotten to say those things. I, if, if May 21, 2011 is the return of Christ, it's accelerating our spiritual process. It's drawing us closer to God. It's, what is so wrong about that? I, I really believe, I really hope you're correct, Harold. I did leave my church. But what I would like to know is, and what I don't understand is, if, if the judgment begins at 6 o'clock p.m. sometime in New Zealand, what about the people in the other parts of the world when they see it happening? Are, are they going to have time to repent? They don't have time to repent. The judgment day has come. Judgment day has come. And all they can do now is is weep and wail. And, uh, and that's, uh, l l let me read it. a couple of verses again from Revelation chapter 18. It's, it, it's so, uh, they stand, they stand... Uh, uh, where, uh, uh, they, they, uh, the kings of the earth, verse 9, and uh, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, the her is the kingdom of Satan that's, that the whole world is under, and, uh, and they shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off on account of the fear of her charm and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn, shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more, and so on. And it's, it's, it's total, total fear and weeping and wailing and crying and because suddenly the the truth has come home to them. It is judgment day, and there's no turn around. There's no no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So if you're in New York and it starts in the other part of the world, it's too. So you basically you have to be resolved in your heart by May twentieth. Well, now you see the problem is that. What is God doing today? He is telling us that this is going to happen, giving us more and more detail 
more and more proofs, more and more signs that indeed we're, we're there. And now this is the time to cry out for mercy. This is the time to come very humbly before God. Oh, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. And, uh, and, uh, and the problem is almost most people of the world are in denial. They don't want to, and they're in their pride, that you won't catch them crawling on their belly to God, pleading with for mercy, Him for mercy. They're too proud. And so it's uh, this, but this is what God, that's the mercy of God for already for, for a long time. We've, uh, God has been giving us these warnings which we have been trying to share. That judgment day is so close, so close. And, uh, and uh, most, almost, m- most people of the world, almost all, all the people in the churches are paying no attention. Or if they're paying attention, they're, they're, uh, d- they're j- just uh, if thinking, well, it won't happen. And uh, uh, they're not about to make any, any, uh, any uh, overtures to God, pleading for mercy, pleading that, oh, Lord, if it is... Uh, is it possible that I might escape that, that I might be thy child, and so on. And so it's, it's, it's all fitting into place. It's just like in the days of Noah. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says. They saw, those people saw this monstrosity, this huge uh, craft that's uh, 300 cubits long and... Uh, 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 and so on, and uh, 75 cubits wide, and so uh, se- uh, 50 cubits wide rather, which would be 75 feet. And they, and they, uh, and they saw all of this, and they, not one of them, not one of them, uh, came to Noah and and said, "Oh, Noah, could have we come on the ark?" Because that's what they, that's that would have been. Uh, that that was the purpose of preaching that they might fear God, and they did not, except for his own family. And you might think this is silly, Hal, but uh, I mean, what do you you prepare? What you're going to what we wear on that day? What do we wear? That that, is, that doesn't mean, mean anything at all. We don't. We, we shouldn't be wearing worrying about how we look or what we wear or where we are. We have to make sure that we are ready to meet God, and and we should be crying right up to the last moment. Oh Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Could it be that I too might become Thy child? And and uh, it doesn't make any difference where we are, or what we're wearing, or what we're doing on that day. Uh, if we are a child of God, we will be taken. And if we're not, we will remain here and and enter into the horrors of that judgment day. Thank you, Harold. Th- thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, good evening, Mr. Campion. Uh, I just have a comment. Uh, it is related to marriage. The thing is, there is a girl. She was married a long time ago. Bobby car business. She was li- she was not living, was living with a man. But I want to marry her. I want to know if I am allowed to marry her. Well, uh, she was married a while ago, and can I marry that? girl if she was married and uh, then you cannot marry her and if she was legally married you cannot marry her uh, and frankly uh, what in the world we only have seven weeks more why even think about the, such ideas when you have a uh, uh, we have a subject here that is just in, uh, incredibly important. The very end of the world and Judgment Day. And how can anybody be planning uh, about thinking about uh, marriage in this day? They should be thinking about what's going to happen to me on that day and, and beginning to plead with God for His mercies. Uh, it's, uh, 
Uh, it's that's the problem with mankind we, they don't take God seriously when we're talking again and again about judgment day this is not fun and games this is not just theological hash of some kind this is absolutely eternally serious and it's 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 a thousand times more important about whether I get married or not it's the, it's the thing that ought to occupy our attention so we don't sleep at night because we're climbing the walls worrying about am I really a child of God or not. But thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, first time caller, new listener. Uh, can you go to the book of uh, Luke chapter 14? Luke 14, let's look at that. Luke 14, yes. Uh, verse 26 and 33. Luke 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And verse 33, so likewise, whosoever be... Uh, he be a view that forsaketh not all that he hath. He cannot be my disciple. Now, what is your question? My question is uh, regarding my uncle. He is a family radio uh, zealot. I mean, he, he's following um, the Bible very closely, and he left to Africa. Um, and he left behind his wife and three kids and a very good career. And he plans on dying or being raptured in Africa, May 21. What's your feedback on that? Well, I don't judge anybody. It's not my role right. to be a judge. I can only teach the Word of God. And he is struggling uh, with how can he spend his closing days uh, if he is, uh, uh, he knows on the one hand, as every true believer does, that, it, that we have to warn the world. Uh, that judgment day is here. That's a command God gives us. I don't know what his relationship is to his family. Uh, I personally would not uh, would not encourage him at all to leave his family at this time. But I'm not going to be a judge over him. I, that's something that he has to work out in his relationship with God. Uh, it's it 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 doesn't sound like it's it's quite like it ought to be but I'm not going to be a judge. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Brother Camping. Yes. As a, as a father of uh, two children, and certainly uh, living the statement that you just said, you know, being preoccupied day and night with the thought of judgment day coming, you know, I, of course, fear being here you know, not being raptured, and, and, you know, if you do survive the actual earthquake, if you were here on planet Earth, what would be the, uh, in other words, I almost feel like it's a human instinct to try to survive even though you know the end is coming. In other words, I believe that day is coming, and, and it's hard to know if you were standing hand in hand with your own son. Well, well excuse after... me. You see, the problem is... We, we think in terms of this world, and we think that uh, at least if for those who are left behind, we ought to have, store, have some stores of water or gasoline for a generator or whatever. We think about this world. That is not where our attention ought to be at all. We should be beseeching the Lord, begging the Lord for the life of our loved ones that we're concerned about not to prepare them to live for a few hours or a few days in this horrible horrible world that will come into existence but to that hopefully that they might that god might still save them that they might uh, uh, escape all of this this is where our attention ought to be this is a, Th this, I, this is I've it. spent every you know every second of my my night almost not being able to sleep at night doing exactly that, and yet somehow again it seems like your father instinct your instincts when you have it. 
well, it's 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 in comparison with what this is going to be. It's uh, uh, any gestures of that kind is. Uh, uh, you can do it. That's between you and the Lord. But it's it is it's very futile because the the situation will be so extra extra terrible 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 that it will be like uh, like like nothing compared with what it's going uh, in answer to what it's going to be. But uh, I, I can't tell you what to do. You have to pray God for wisdom. You pray Him for wisdom. I, I just do not, um, in my judgment, the, the biggest thing is constantly uh, spiritual, constantly spiritual and praying for their well-being and, and praying for the well-being of others that some others of our friends might also have their spiritual eyes open. And, and, uh, but then uh, I, I can't answer for anybody else. But I can't. I thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Mr. Campy. Yes. I have a question concerning marriage. Um, I was uh, I was married to a woman for uh, over 25 years. It was my first marriage. And uh, when I married her, she had been married once before. And she divorced her husband. And then I married her, and we were together over 25 years, and then she divorced me. I was wondering, during that time, was I living in adultery, or is that just a one time? Yeah, yeah, and you were adultery. you were living in rebellion against God, but once you were married, uh, you couldn't uh, divorce her, because you, it was a marriage, even though it was a wrong marriage. And so you had to make the best of it as if it were a first marriage and if you became a child of God all of that sin would have been covered by the blood of Christ okay I appreciate that thank, question th I had thank you thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum no rapture May 21 at yahoo.com no uh, oh, well, thank you for your comment. And now shall we go to our next caller, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes. Yes, uh, I have a question uh, about marriage. Um, if I married uh, somebody, if I was married and now I'm married, knowing that um, the uh, 20, May 21st is coming, should I stay away from uh, this marriage and uh, try to um, get right with God? Uh, knowing it's coming, should I? Uh, no, it, no it, 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 no look, it's not. Me. Excuse me, it's not wrong to marry. I uh, we have to. We live in our in our world, and here's someone, for example, who's been uh, contemplating marriage for some time to someone, and uh, and knowing that there's only a few weeks left yet, uh, uh, they uh, will go ahead with their marriage. Nobody can fault that. But we got to be careful. What is our mind on? What is really important? What is really, what, is, what really is, the, you know, when we talk about Judgment Day coming, a lot of people are looking at this like we're talking about the big game is going to come, or we're talking about uh, a presidential election is going to come, or something else that is going to come and uh, and and we give it about the same amount of attention but we're not talking about that kind of a thing we're talking about the end of the world that we are talking about where are we going to be forevermore we're talking about something that is infinitely more terrible and awesome and wonderful for the true for the elect of God who are the true believers but terrible terrible for those who are not and and it should require it should be taking up all of our attention it's it's not it's not like uh, uh, any human event of any kind and yet most people in the world are looking at it like well okay maybe it'll happen or maybe it won't happen 
my, my, don't they realize? Yes, and if and it will happen, and uh, and it means that if that if that's our attitude, we're going to be one of those entering into judgment day, and and uh, how awful, how terrible that we have to be facing this, and it's uh, it's. Uh, it's infinitely, that's not too big a word, infinite is awful big, but it's infinitely more serious and awesome and terrible and, and wonderful for the true believers uh, uh, than anything else, any human event that we can possibly ever think about. And uh, yet most man of uh, mankind are just treating it like... Uh, well, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe. My, my, I feel so sorry for them. I, and I just want to pray more and more. Oh, Lord, have mercy on some of these yeah, dear people. But shall we take our last call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes. Yes. Mr. Camping? Yes. Yes, on Matthew twenty four thirty six, did another scripture cancel that scripture out or make it null and void? Uh, no, it's not at all. That scripture was uh, God tells us in Acts chapter one, verse seven and eight, uh, that how long that particular condition would exist. It's just like when we read the Bible about Old Testament burnt offerings for example now does that make because we don't offer burnt offerings anymore does that make the old scripture the old testament scripture null and void no that was the word of god we read it and and try to understand it and because as we try to understand it we understand more and more about the mercy of god and the character of god's salvation plan and so on uh, but god doesn't just because he commanded something for a period of time and then later on indicated that uh, and, but also indicated it was only for a particular period of time that doesn't mean that uh, sometime is going to be unimportant at all it's still the word of God and is still uh, something that we have to be, uh, read about and take very seriously but we 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 read it in the light of everything God says about that. In the future tense of that day, of that day meaning the judgment day, I'm guessing what you're saying, of that day knoweth no man. And then to even emphatically state, not, not even the angels in heaven, only my Father. And now he's separating himself. From his father saying, only my father knows. Well, now, excuse me. Christ knows, of course, because he is eternal God. Uh, any man who has seen me, he said, has seen the, the father. And now you're uh, alluding, I think, to Mark chapter 13, verse 32, where it says, and uh, neither uh, any man or no man. But that's not talking. No, no, no son. Ne neither the son. But that's not talking about Christ. That's an impossibility, uh, and it's a t it's a trap because if they if you think of that as the Son is Christ, then you're denying that Christ is eternal God. But right now we've come to our end. I have to say good night.